Hello everyone, today we're going to be looking at 2x2 two two matrices. A 2x2 two two matrix looks like the following. We have a 2x2 two two set of numbers, so A, B, C, and D are numbers, and we have kind of what looks like giant brackets around them. These numbers are called elements. So a 2x2 two two matrix has 4 elements, because 2 times 2 is 4. Later on, we're going to look at a 3x3 three three matrix, which will have 9 elements. What we're going to do first is we're going to look at what's called the determinant of a matrix. So the determinant looks like the same thing as a matrix, except instead of brackets, it looks more like absolute values. And for a 2x2 two two matrix, the determinant is equal to AD minus BC. So if we look at our matrix, it's kind of like making an X. I multiply A times D, I multiply B times C, and then I subtract them. Just remember that subtraction is not commutative, so make sure you're doing this in the correct order. So we'll do some examples. So find the determinant of the matrix 2, 4, negative 3, 1, or sometimes called 2, negative 3, 4, 1, depending on if you're um, saying them from top to bottom or left to right. It doesn't really matter. So again, here is what the determinant looks like symbolically. And then we're going to plug it into the formula. So AD is 2 times 1, BC is negative 3 times 4. Remember order of operations, multiplication comes before subtraction. I end up with a double negative, and I get 14. So let's try another one. We have the matrix 7, negative 2, 0, 4. If I plug it into the formula for the determinant, I have 7 times 4 minus 0 times negative 2, and that gives me 28. I have the determinant 1, 1, 2, 2. I plug it in, I get 1 times 2 times 2 times 1. And I end up with 0, which is a perfectly normal determinant. I can get 0. Here's another one, negative 2, 4, 3, 5. Negative 2 times 5 minus 3 times 4. Again, we're making that x when we do it. We get negative 10 minus 12, which is negative 22. And for our last one, for just finding the determinant, we have negative 1, 3, negative 10, 12. So that's negative 1 times 12 minus, 10, uh, minus negative 10 times 3. So negative 12 plus 30, which gives us 18. So the real reason we care about these matrices is to find another way to solve 2 by 2 systems of equations. So if we have the following system, a1x plus b1y equals c1, a2x plus b2y equals c2, we know how to solve them from uh, TechMath 1. We could solve them by graphing them. We could solve them using the addition method. We could solve them using the substitution method. So here we're going to come up with another method that's called Kramer's Rule. Kramer's Rule is derived from the addition method. So if you want to see uh, how this works behind the scenes, you can either read through the book or just try it yourself using the addition method. So we're going to get that x is dx over d and y is dy over d, where these d's are determinants of matrices. So the matrix D, which is the denominator for both x and y, is the matrix we get by looking at the coefficients of x and the coefficients of y. So we have, uh, again, the coefficients of x is the first column, the coefficients of y is the second column. For d sub x, what we do is we replace the x column with our right-hand side. And then the y column is the original y's from before. The same is true if we look at d sub y. The y column becomes the right-hand side of the equation, and the x column is the original x's that we had. So we replace whatever letter we have down here, we replace that column with the right-hand side of the equations, and every other variable is the coefficients that they were in the original D. You'll see this more when we get to 3 by 3 equations later. Um, so right now there's only two, so it's kind of harder to tell, but just remember the 
um, for this, for instance, the D, Y, again, it's the Y column that gets replaced with the right hand side. And then X, the other variable, stays what it was in the original um, matrix D. So we'll see this come up a lot in the following examples. So for the first one, we're going to solve the following 2 by 2 equations using Kramer's rule. So 2x minus 3y equals 7, 4x plus y equals 7. So I'm going to set up my matrix D, and again, I'm looking for the determinant. So I take my coefficients of x, and, and that's going to be my first column. And then I'm going to take the coefficients of y, and that's going to be my second column. Don't forget about the negatives. Then according to the formula for the determinant, we have 2 times 1, which is 2, minus negative 3 times 4, so that becomes a plus 12. And my d determinant is 14. So again, that's going to be the denominator for both my x and my y. Next, I'm going to look at the matrix D sub X. So my right-hand side takes over for the X column. And my Y is the same as it was in the Ds. So again, it's the X column for D sub X that changes to the right-hand side. The Y column stays the same as it was for the original matrix D. I plug it in, I get 7 times 1 minus negative 3 times 7. That becomes 28. And then for my last matrix, I'm going to have D sub Y. So now the Y column gets replaced by the right-hand side, and the X's are the same as they were in the beginning. Oops, and then that becomes 14 minus 28, which is negative 14. So X is D sub X over D, which is 28 over 14, which is 2 y is d sub y over d, negative 14 over 14, which is negative 1. So my answer, remember, uh, going back to tech 1, is always x comma y. So my answer is 2 comma negative 1. You should always check your answer. So if I plug it back into my first equation, is 2 times 2 minus 3 times negative 1, 7? Well, I get 4 plus 3, which is 7. I will also plug it into the second equation. Is 4 times 2 plus negative 1, 7? Yes, it is. So I've checked my answer. I know that I'm right. And I can move on to the next one. So the next one is 2x plus 4y equals 12. Negative 3x minus 6y equals negative 18. So the first thing I'm going to do is create my determinant for my matrix D. 2, negative 3, again coming from the coefficients of x, and then negative 4, 6, coming from the coefficients of y. Plugging into the equation, I get negative 12 plus 12. This gives me 0, and this is a problem because remember d is a denominator and I cannot divide by 0. If this happens, we're going to have one of two cases. We have to ask ourselves, what is d sub x? So we plug in our d sub x. So again, our x column gets replaced by our right-hand side. And then our y column is the same as it was. We get negative 72 plus 72. And that is also 0. When this happens, when d is 0 and d sub x is 0, or d sub y, <clears throat> I could have done this with d sub y too and it wouldn't matter. If they're both zero, this means there are infinitely many solutions. And if you remember from tech one, infinitely many solutions means that our two equations were actually the same line. Another word for an, another word that means infinitely many solutions is dependent. So we say the system is dependent, there are infinitely many solutions, our two equations are actually one equation and it's the same line. So let's try another one. 4x minus 3y equals 8, negative 8x plus 6y equals 12. I set up my d, and I get 4, negative 8 for my x column, negative 3, 6 for my y column, and I get 24 minus 24 
equals z equals zero. So again, our denominator cannot be zero, and we look for d sub x. So d sub x in this case is the right hand side becomes our x column, so 8, 12, and our y column remains the same at negative 36. We get 48 plus 36, which is not zero. I don't care what it is if it's not zero. If I have my d, so my denominator is zero, and either d sub x or d sub y is not zero, then there's no solution. This is also called inconsistent. And remember that graphically what this means is that my two equations are of parallel lines. So they never intersect and there is no solution. So let's try another one where there will be a solution. We have 5x minus 6y equals negative 4 and 4x plus 3y equals 2. My D matrix is 5, 4 for the x column, negative 6, 3 for the y column. If I do out my AD minus BC, I get 15 plus 24, which is 39. My D sub X, again, I have my X column is my right hand side at negative 4, 2. And my Y column is the same as before at negative 6, 3. I get negative 12 plus 12 which is zero, but remember d sub x is a numerator and I can have zero in my numerator as many times as I want, so this is not a problem. So we move on to d sub y. So again, the x column is the same and it's the y column that becomes the right hand side. I get 10 plus 16, so I get 26. I plug it into my formulas for x and y, so x is d sub x over d which is 0 over 39, which is 0. And y is dy over d, which is 26 over 39, which simplifies down to 2 thirds. So again, our solution is the point 0 comma 2 thirds. And again, we can plug it into our equations and make sure that they're true. If I plug in uh, 0 comma 2 thirds into the first equation, I have 5 times 0 minus 6 times 2 thirds, and that is negative 4. And then I can plug it into my second equation. 4 times 0 plus 3 times 2 thirds does give me 2. So again, I've checked my answer, I know that I'm right, and I can go on to my next one. So as our last example, we have 4x plus 3y equals negative 2, 12x minus 2y equals 5. For d, I have my 4 and 12 from my x column, my 3 and negative 2 from my y column. And when I plug it into ad minus bc, I get negative 8 minus 36, and that becomes negative 44. For d sub x, my negative 2, 5 comes from my right-hand side. My 3, negative 2, again, comes from the y column originally. I get... 4 minus 15, which is negative 11. Then my d sub y, I have my x column, 4, 12, and I have my right hand side for my y column, negative 2, 5. And then ad minus bc is 20 plus 24, which is 44. Then I go and plug them into my equations. x is d sub x over d negative 11 over negative 44, which simplifies down to 1 fourth. y is d sub y over d, 44 over negative 44, which is negative 1. So again, I have my answer as 1 fourth comma negative 1. I will plug it into my first equation. 4 times a quarter is 1. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. 1 plus negative 3 is negative 2. So it checks off in the, first col in the first equation. Plug it into the second equation. 12 times a quarter is 3. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. And 3 plus 2 is 5. So again, it satisfies both equations. I know that I'm right. Okay, so if you haven't already, read through the sections of the book. Uh, try out the homework. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.